in this lecture, I'm going to discuss pi bonding, and pi bonding is the other type of bonding other than sigma bo uh, bonding. Uh, there are two types of covalent bonds. One is sigma, and this one is pi. We have uh, discussed sigma bonds in a previous lecture, so we're going to move on to pi bonds. Now, um, I'm going to start off with an example, and I'm going to discuss oxygen first. Uh, now, if you look at the electronic configuration of oxygen, which has eight electrons, so you would notice that it has two orbitals. One is the 2py and the other one is the 2pz orbital, which which have incomplete uh, orbitals. So they need one electron each. So this oxygen would try to pull somebody's, uh, some other atom's electron in the 2py orbital to complete that. And there's another 2pz orbital which uh, needs an electron. So, so oxygen needs two electrons. So if it's going to try and form a covalent bond, it's going to try and attract an electron from two uh, separate atoms or it could be from the same atom as well so so what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe a, a pi bonding by give you giving you an example of an oxygen molecule in which an oxygen atom is bonded to another oxygen atom and they both complete their outermost shells now I've drawn two oxygen atoms uh, and I've only sh shown the 2py and the 2pz orbitals because they are involved in bonding. They need one electron. So, so this is one oxygen atom over here, and this is uh, in the center. This is the nucleus, and this the the green one is the 2py orbital. Now, if you look carefully, if these two oxygen atoms get sufficiently close together, what's going to happen is that the 2py orbitals. This oxygen needs. Uh, if you look at the left hand oxygen, it needs one electron in its 2py orbital. So it's going to try and attract the electron from the other oxygen atom and the right hand side oxygen atom is going to try and pull the electron from the the oxygen atom on the left hand side so the two two py orbitals are going to merge um, both oxygen atoms are going to attract each other's electrons and the new uh, density electron density or the region where there's going to be a high probability of finding an electron is going to be it's going it's going to be right in the middle because because uh, the electrons can would not be able to go to either oxygen atom because both of them are pulling those electrons so so they get stuck in the middle and that's going to form the sigma bond which would be right in the middle and right at the center that's where the probability of finding an electron would be maximum so the two py orbitals of both oxygen atoms are going to merge together and they're going to end up and end up forming forming a sigma bond now what would happen with the 2pz orbitals which are drawn in blue over here now they are in parallel they cannot be because 2py and 2pz orbitals have a 90 degree they're they're both on um, opposite axis so now if you look at the 2pz orbital which is in the in blue which is drawn in blue over here uh, they need one electron as well so if you look at the right hand oxygen atom it's going to try and attract an electron from the 2pz orbital and try to fill its 2pz orbital whereas the other oxygen atom is going to do the same it's going to try and attract the electrons from this 2pz orbital towards itself so now what's going to happen is because both oxygen atoms are attracting those electrons equally the highest probability of finding an electron would would be right in the middle so the new uh, bonding orbital would looks something like this it's going to look something like this where with the 2pz orbitals are going to merge together and the maximum electron density or the highest probability of finding an electron would be right in the middle somewhere because both oxygen atoms are attracting electrons equally and this would happen with the other lobe as well so So this would happen with the other lobe as well and they are going to merge as well and the region of maximum electron density would be right in the middle because both oxygen atoms are trying to attract each other's uh, 2pz orbitals, the electrons in the 2pz orbitals. So, so there's going to be an overlap above and below the axis connecting the nuclei and this is called your pi bond. So the first bond between elements which is formed is always a sigma bond where the electron density lies right in the middle. But once that region is occupied, the other orbitals are going to merge uh, above and below the axis. So there's going to there are going to be two electron densities, one above the sigma bond and one below the sigma bond, and this represents one pi bond. And this represents the molecule of oxygen, where oxygen has is forming a double bond, one of which is a is a sigma bond and the other one is a pi bond. 
Now, you have probably uh, developed some understanding of what a pi bond is. So, I'm going to briefly outline uh, some properties of pi bonds. Now, the first one that we have already discussed is that the electron density lies above and below the axis. Which means that the, that the electron density would not be in the middle of the two nuclei. It would be either above or below the axis connecting the two nuclei because the middle is already occupied by a sigma bond. The second one is that pi bonds are formed between orbitals which are lying in parallel because if the orbitals were lying end to end then they would uh, most likely form a sigma bond uh, and you, as you can see that the two, two pz orbitals, the blue ones over here, they were lying in parallel which is why they ended up forming a pi bond. The third point is that the, that rotation is, is not possible across a pi bond. Which means that this molecule cannot uh, twist, it cannot, uh, one side of the pi bond cannot rotate independently because they are now locked in place. If you try to rotate only one side, then you would have to get rid of the pi bond. So it's not possible to rotate, uh, for example, if I want to rotate this side and I want to uh, uh, sort of turn the 2pz orbital in some other direction, I would not be able to do that because the entire molecule is now locked in place. So just remember, whenever you have a pi bond, uh, rotation would not be possible on either side of the of the pi bond independently. The entire structure would rotate, uh, not just one side. And the last point is that the that whenever two elements bond, the first bond is always it's always going to be a sigma bond, which is shown in green over here. And the rest of the bonds, because now the electron density in the middle, the middle part is occupied between the two nuclei. Now any orbital overlap that would take place either above or below the axis so so the rest of the bonds are all going to be pi bond what that means is that if you have a double bond what that means is that if you have a double bond then a double bond would consist of one sigma and one pi bond the first one is going to be the sigma bond and the rest the other uh, double bond would be the would be the pi bond and if you have a triple bond then that would mean that you would have the first bond would be a sigma bond and the rest would be pi bond so there would be two pi bonds I'm just going to do an example where I would show what a triple bond would look like and if you if you just have a single bond then in that case that would suggest that there's only one sigma bond so the so between two elements i'm not talking about all the bonds i'm just talking about uh, the amount of bonds formed between two elements so if they're making a single bond that's only a sigma bond if they're making a double bond that's one sigma plus one pi and if they're making a triple bond the first one is going to be the sigma and the other two bonds are going to be pi bonds